Okay, when we do the video on the internet, we will make sure that that part is edited out. I don't know how to follow that. Well, amen. If you're, if you're glad to be here this morning, say amen. amen. All right, as we are continuing our current series, Encounters with Christ. If you have the Word of God all over the sanctuary, whether in digital or printed format, hold it up over your head. Amen. We love to see the Word of God in our hands. We know that it is our practice at Living Hope Church that when somebody teaches, when somebody preaches, we have his, God's Word open in our laps. Please turn to Luke, the Gospel of Luke, Matthew, Mark, then the book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. I come here this morning as I come each and every week. I bid you grace and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this day. We give thanks for the praise and worship that we have just uh, rendered unto you. Father, let the teacher's words be pure and spoken without error in the slightest from your word in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ healed many people when he was on this earth. He healed the blind. He healed the lame. But there are two miracles that are reported in great detail. They are the miracles of the healing of the lepers. He healed a single leper in Matthew chapter 8 verses 1 through 4. And you will see today that Christ heals 10 lepers. But bear in mind that in Scripture, in God's Holy Word, leprosy is also symbolic of sin. If you have the Word of God, please notice as we read now today's passage from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. I'm going to read that once again. So it happened. So it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, where, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to them, Arise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. You have to understand what leprosy meant in those days. I want you to imagine this. Lepers were the outcasts. They had an incurable disease. So imagine, fathers, one morning you wake up and you notice a slight numbness in one of your fingers. And you don't think anything about it. You go about your work, but then after a few days you notice that numbness gets a little, a little more and a little more numb working its way through your hand. And then your hand starts to turn whitish and lumpy. And you know what that means. And you tell your wife, I need to go see the priest. You see, in those days, the Mosaic Law demanded that you present yourself to the priest so he could tell you and, and, and justify what was about to happen. And so the priest would take a look at your hand or whatever part was affected, recognize it as leprosy, and cast you out of society. Imagine not being there for your children, not being there for your wife, not being there basically for any significant human fellowship whatsoever. Imagine the loneliness, the pain, the grief, as you would, you would come close and try to observe your family from a distance. And you would see your, your children as they would play, and you're not part of that. You would see your wife as she went about her business, surely struggling without you there to, to help along the way. And your heart would just be crushed by what has happened in your life. But today we see that Christ 
heals ten lepers. And in today's encounter with Christ, you have some notes there in front of you. Please feel free to fill it in. Today's encounter in Christ, we first see the people that are involved in today's story. The people that are involved in today's story. In verses 11 and 12, I read again, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. Can you imagine this unimaginable scene of suffering that Christ sees before him? Not one, but ten lepers. Can you imagine how Christ's heart felt? Can you imagine how the great heart of God feels at the suffering of one of his creations? You know, in Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 and 16, we read, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all of creation. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God. Now listen to this in verse 16 of Colossians chapter 1. This is a verse that you should have imprinted upon your heart. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through Him and for Him. Jesus Christ is the one that did the creation. God the Father said it. God the Holy Spirit empowered it. God the Son did it. And I want you to understand that you were created in the image of God. The image of God. I've said it so many times before, but it bears repeating. That when God created man out of the dust of the earth and formed him with his own hands, Scripture says that the Lord God bent down and breathed his life, his spirit, into man and gave him his life. And when Adam opened his eyes for the first time, the very first thing that he ever saw was the face of his God. What an amazing thing. And then when Adam and Eve, they were, they were created in a glorified state. We forget that sometimes. They were not created like us. And then with that one bite of, of the forbidden fruit, the Shekinah glory, the glory of God left their bodies. And ever since then, God wants us back. Amen? We were not created for suffering. We were created for a relationship with our Heavenly Father. We were creation, created for a relationship with God. But because of sin, both that relationship with God and the state of our bodies was destroyed. If you think not, how many of you in this sanctuary are over, say, 45 years old? You don't need to raise your hands. Are you happy with your body? Are you excited about what's coming in heaven? Say amen. amen. Yeah, all you young people don't know what that's like yet. But, but you, you folks that are a little more mature understand. You see, that, that state of our bodies was destroyed. All of humanity has corrupted bodies. And all of humanity as well has corrupted souls. Hundreds of millions of people with disease running rampant in their bodies. But this is even more unimaginable. Seven billion people plus with diseased souls. Except for those that have been re redeemed by Jesus Christ, our Savior. What an amazing thing. You want to talk about miracles? It's a miracle that Christ ever set foot on earth. It is a miracle that he left the glories of heaven to set foot on a diseased, corrupted planet. As I said earlier, in the past, not just in biblical times either, but as recent as the 1950s, lepers had to be separated from society. Look at the last four words of verse 12 in your Bible. If you're there, please say amen. Now I'll say amen because I'm there now. It says, the last four words says, they stood afar off. That physical separation that a sick person has because of their disease is a terrible thing. If you've ever been in a place with people that are 
horribly, terribly diseased, you know, they have to be separated. They have to be, they're contagious, and therefore they, they need to be separated from society. Nowadays, I think we're losing a little bit because we protect our children too much. You know, you, you do need to build up a natural immunity. When I was a kid, it was almost like if somebody in the street had the mumps and the measles, they sent you there to get it. <laughs> Let's get this out of the way. Let's get this over with. And all God's people my age are, say amen. You know what I'm talking about. But that terrible physical separation from parents, from family, from society is nothing when compared to the separation sinful man has from a holy and righteous God. But the great heart of God sent the Son. The great heart of the Holy Spirit empowered the Son. And the great heart of the Lord Jesus Christ is now going to be moved to action for the people that we just saw. So first we see the people. Because He acts on behalf, the Lord Jesus does, of the poor in spirit. Amen? Secondly, we see the plea. The plea. Look at verse 13, if you would, please. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. There is passion in what they're saying. It says that they lifted their voices. When we come in and sing praises to a holy God, we are to lift our voices. Amen? Have you ever been in a church when, when people claim that they're glad to be part? They claim that they love Jesus? And then you hear, Praise God from whom... While well, you're standing right next to Him, and you sing loud, and then you get the look, what I call the worship killer, only that doesn't work on me. I'm going to praise God no matter what. If you don't want to hear me sing, you just need to sing louder. Because I'm going to praise my Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It says that they lifted up their voice. Remember, never forget this. These people are deathly ill. They will die eventually from their illness and horrible disfigurement. Not only are they deathly ill, they are physically weak. They are physically weak in body. Not only that, they are weak in their soul. They have been cut off from society. And because they are so diseased, Mosaic Law, the Holy Scripture demanded, mandated, that they stand far off. So they had to lift their voices to be heard. Amen? You ever had to lift your voice to be heard over the hubbub around you and, and do it from a ways off? I, I remember one time many, many, many years ago uh, uh, when, I was when I was first licensed as a preacher that, that uh, I was scheduled to preach on a Wednesday night and I came up with, I wasn't sick, but out of nowhere my voice was struck and I could barely speak. And I went into a room with my brother Michael Chinqui and my brother Dave Ramos, and my brother Roger Fable, and I called down the power of the Holy Spirit. And my voice was strengthened enough to get through that message, and then I was unable to speak for about a week. A wonderful blessing for Miss Ruthann. Figured you'd catch that. So they had to lift their voice to be heard. And because of sin, think about this, as they were far off because of their sin, we, because of our sin, are far off from our Heavenly Father. We are far off from God. But the wonderful news is that when we lift up our voices and cry out to our God, when we lift up our voices and cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ, He hears our cry. He hears us. Not only is there passion, but they're also asking the right person here. They're talking to the right person. Think about this. They're not going to the government for help. They aren't asking some dead saint to help. They're not going to the church folks to, for help. They run to the one person that can help them. They go to Jesus. They go to Jesus. That's where we need to go in our sin. We need to go to the Lord Jesus Christ. I love it when the Lord backs up what I'm preaching on. And they do it with praise. They do it with praise. They call Jesus Master. You know, there's just something about that name. Amen? There's just something about that name of Jesus. 
How many of you guys remember that old hymn, Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name? See, all you young people forget that. I'm going to turn off my mic. How many people remember that song? We're going to sing. I'm going to lead without the mic. No, I'm going to leave the mic on. You guys are going to just have to abide under this. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus. Like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms may all pass away. But there's something about that name. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I promise I'll never put you through that again. But there's something about the name of Jesus. I can't sing, but I want to sing. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys for, 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 for dealing with that with me. I never get tired of praising my Savior. There is no one that can say anything about the grace of God to this old sinner here. Because, my friends, there is just something about that name. Now, let's look again at these lepers. Not only do they praise him, they ask Jesus for pity. They ask him for mercy. They are wisely looking for earthly, physical healing by turning to divine mercy. I'm not sure you got that. I'm going to go back through that one more time. They are wisely looking for earthly, physical healing by turning to divine mercy. Friends, when we come to the cross of salvation, we come seeking mercy from a righteous God. Amen? So first we saw the people. Second, we saw the plea. Third, we now are going to see the principle applied in this encounter with Christ. The principle that is applied. Look, at, if you will, at verse 14. If you're there, please say amen. Let's try that again. If you're there, say, please say amen. amen. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. If you want to be healed by a holy God, then don't be surprised that the one doing the healing wants something in return. If you want healing from God, don't be surprised when he asks for something in return. The lepers called out to Jesus. Jesus sees them and commands them, go show yourselves. In other words, go present yourselves. You ever presented yourself? You know, usually when we present ourselves, we get dressed up, we get all nice, and we present ourselves. When a wedding takes place, we present ourselves. The husband presents himself as a groom. And then nobody cares because they're all looking at the wife, the bride coming down the aisle to present themselves. And if you, if you are like I were, guys, you know that the first time I saw my wife in that gown, I, I lost my voice. I simply lost my voice. I went, hallelujah, <laughs> praise God, looky here. <laughs> Moving on. By the way, Miss Ruthann hates that when I, when I start talking about her. So they, they say, Jesus commands them, go show yourselves, present yourself. Where are they to go? They are to present themselves to the priest. Now listen, I, here's what I would have been thinking. Wait a minute. These are the guys that declared us unclean. What good is that going to do? If they could have done something to start with, wouldn't they have done it, Lord Jesus? Which brings me to another point. You may see faith healers all the time on, on TV and these televangelists. I, I want you to, I, I just, I, I believe that God can work through anybody to heal someone. I believe he works through prayer. But may I ask, for these guys that claim to be faith healers, why aren't they all at the children's hospital? If I had the gift of healing, you could not pull me out of the children's hospital. And not only that, there wouldn't be a charge for it either. So all of you guys listening in on the internet right now, I hope this goes viral, shame on you. Heal them. 
if you have that gift. But we know that whatever we may think, God does the healing. Amen? But these guys, these lepers today, are obedient to Mosaic Law. They are obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ. And may I ask, why is the world so shocked when we cry out to God for salvation, when we cry out to God to do something, and God says, go and present yourself to my Son, Jesus Christ. You see, He is the high priest Himself. He is the only way to get to heaven. John 14, 6 reads, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Living Hope Church, you know that so well. Amen? Amen. Pastor Larry says that verse every single week. How do I know that that works? We only need to point to the thief on the cross. The thief on the cross that accepted Jesus Christ was told by the Lord Jesus, this very day I will see you in paradise. He didn't have time to tithe. He didn't have time to get baptized. He didn't have time for any good works. He didn't have time to get to church. All that he had time to do was to accept Jesus Christ. And that's what I call getting in there at the last moment. But he's in. Amen? Amen. Now, the lepers are obedient and immediately go. May I ask, when God says, go to my son, why would we go anywhere else? Why would we be looking for other ways into heaven? God says, here it is. You want to come to heaven? This is the way right here. Verse 14 ends with the statement, as they went, they were cleansed. Think about that. As they went, they, weren't even, they didn't even get to the, to, the, to the priest yet. They were cleansed. When they did what they were told, God was faithful and true. When they did what they were told, Jesus Christ was faithful and true to cleanse them. And He'll do the same thing with your heart today. He'll do the same thing with you. If you're sitting here in this sanctuary and you've never received Jesus Christ as Lord, if you're watching on the internet and you've never done that, He can forgive you today. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you are right now. All that you need to do is accept Jesus Christ as Savior. And God immediately will heal you on your way. And He will save us from our sins just as fast. So first we saw the people. Second we saw the plea. Third we saw the principle. Now we see the praise. Now we come to the praise. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but when, when, we're, when we're singing during praise and worship, you'll never catch Pastor Larry peeking at his notes, looking at stuff for last minute preparation. Listen, the sermon should be prepared by then. I come here when praise and worship comes because I want to break out in praise and worship. I want to get my heart right for preaching the Word of God. That is why I come here. So ten men now, nine of them Hebrews, are cleansed. Look at verse 15 and 16 if we read one more time. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice, I love that, with a loud voice, glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Now, if you know anything about the Bible, in those days, the Samaritans were almost outcasts themselves. They were reviled by the Jewish people. But apparently, lepers had broken down that barrier. They suffered together. So ten men are told to go. Ten men are, are cleansed. None of those are Hebrews, but only the outcast Samaritan. In other words, one in ten returns to the healer, Jesus Christ, and glorifies God. Friends, in churches everywhere, not just in America, but in churches around the world, that same scene is repeated every single Sunday. People are saved. People cry out to God to save them. And they accept Jesus Christ as Lord. And then they drift in and out of church. Now, I'm not trying to point any fingers here. I realize that in, in, in the, the financial situations that we find ourselves with our, our current economy, that sometimes you, to get a job, you, it is demanded that you have to work once in a while on Sunday. But I want you to try this. Just tell your boss, I can't do that. Try it. I would like you, Mr. Manager, I would like you, Mr. Boss, I know I agreed to this, do this job, but perhaps in six months would it be possible for me to once in a while not have to work on Sunday morning on my regular shift. Give it a try. See what God can do. 
The one thing that should be as common as water in the ocean, friends, is simple gratitude for our salvation. Amen? But there are far more that receive the benefits of salvation. There are far more that receive the benefits of healing than the, the, there are of those that return and give praise for the healing to the healer. We should never forget who the great healer is, who the great physician is. And look at the Samaritan in verse 14. What does it say? He gave praise with a loud voice he glorified God. A loud voice. Listen, church, should we not render praise unto God with a voice at least as loud as the voice that we use to cry out to God? See, I thought I'd get a testimony there. I'm glad I brought my own. I say amen and hallelujah. I want to praise God at, at a minimum as loud as I cried out to God to do something with my life. But you see, so often people receive an eternity of mercy and return to give a weekly hour of praise. And sometimes that weekly hour of praise is rendered weekly. If you get the, the gist of my words. Friends, we are to share the gospel, but the gospel isn't something that we do. The gospel as Christians is something that we are. We are to praise God, but praising God is not something we do. Praising God is something we are. When you get up in the morning and open your eyes, you should, you, you should just, your heart should just burst out in praise of your Heavenly Father. When, 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 you, when you get up and the legs work, even though they might be a little stiff for some of us older folks, when the eyes work, if you're breathing when you got up, praise God. Render praise unto our Heavenly Father. Praise should be eternal. Praise should be constant. Praise should be done with a lifted heart. Praise should be done with a loud voice of worship for King Jesus. And far too often man returns in gratitude or worse, indifference for God's great good heart. Do you remember verse 13? It says that all ten lepers came crying out to Jesus Christ with a loud voice. Why should Christ, when He does the healing, not expect all ten to return and worship Him in, a, in at least the same volume of a voice, at least with the same outcry? You see, when we encounter Christ, Christ encounters us. Christ is looking for that encounter. Christ is seeking that encounter. Christ wants to heal you. Christ wants to give you peace in your heart. And when he does that, Christ wants that relationship to grow and grow and grow. I want it to be said that, that if I am not able to, to, to sing praises to my God, that, the, that the, the, the rocks and everything around me burst out in praise to my Lord Jesus Christ. The number that came seeking healing is far greater than the ones that came back praising. Listen, don't be one of those guys. Don't be one of those ladies and girls. Don't be one of those Christians. Don't be the one that comes with an ocean of prayer and comes back with a thimble full of praise. Let your praise equal your gratitude in your prayer. Praise should naturally follow our prayer. It's natural. And let us also think about this for just a moment. The nine were okay obeying the ritual. Did you notice that? They were okay obeying the ritual of the church. No problem with that. But they were not okay with returning to the feet of Jesus Christ. Let us never be afraid to be a church that's afraid to fall at the feet of Jesus Christ. What about the modern Christian? What about the modern Christian that, that seems to get comfortable and okay with the tradition of church, but not okay with throwing themselves at the feet of Jesus daily? Not okay with praising the Lord with a loud voice. Not okay with proclaiming Christ to the world. If somebody, if I came down with, with stage 4 untreatable cancer and somebody healed me of that cancer, I would be shouting it from the rooftops who did, well, who the doctor was. I would, be, I would continue praising God for that. Listen guys, it's great to come to church. Jamie and Cliff and their team ensure that our corporate worship is amazing at Living Hope Church. But living praise is marked by individual worship. The Samaritan leper was one out of ten in prayer, 
but he's the one that returned alone to praise God. And when it comes to receiving salvation, you must come alone to the foot of the cross. You see, you can't be saved simply by going to church. You can't be saved by putting the Bible on, under your, your head on your pillow. If you could, people would be saved. You must come to Christ one at a time. You must come crying out with a loud voice, Mercy, Lord Jesus Christ. Please give me mercy for my sinful heart, for my sinful soul. I preach right off my notes. Come to Christ alone. Now, look at, now let's look at what happened in verses 17 to 19. If you're there, back in the book of uh, Luke, please say amen. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Can you imagine the heart of Jesus Christ? Jesus asked, where are the rest that I healed? Now we see the grace of the newly redeemed. We're going to see the heart of this Samaritan that has been redeemed by God and just watch closely at how he feels. Watch closely at how he reacts to this question. When Jesus says, where are the rest? What does the Samaritan say? What a blessing it is that the Samaritan doesn't slam anyone. He doesn't thump his chest, only I have come back, Lord. In your whole church, I'm the only one to do this. In your, own, your whole church, I'm the only one that comes on Sunday and gives praise right. I'm the only one that came back seeking your face, Lord. Why does he not do that? Because he is too blessed in his heart, to notice that he alone was there to praise God. When I come praising God, it doesn't matter who's standing around me. It doesn't matter if they want to sit in their chairs, they're simply going to be sitting next to somebody that's standing up and praising God. You see, the Samaritan's one desire is to praise his Savior. And Jesus is evidently, in this passage, pleased. The question where are the nine? In other words, the, com the condemnation of where are the nine bears in it, by inference, the commendation for the one. And that commendation for the one to return comes with a blessing. What blessing, you ask? I'm so glad you asked. Let me share. He has been cleansed by his encounter with Christ. The Samaritan is now called by Christ. Did you know that you have been called by Christ? You have been called by the Lord Jesus Christ. When you walk out today, as you're going past the door, heading down to Fellowship Hall for our after-service fellowship, notice what it says on that banner. You are now entering your mission field. The Samaritan is now called by Christ. And like the disciples we learned about last week, he's been told to arise and go your way. Isn't that an odd way to phrase that? That the Lord Jesus would say, arise and go your way. Why? Why would Christ say that? Because the Samaritan's way is the same as the Lord's way. He now walks with his Savior. He's been blessed by his Savior. He wants his feet to travel the path that the Lord Jesus Christ has laid out for him. And whether he is aware of it or not, this cleansed leper will now become a fisher of men as we saw last week. Can you imagine this guy showing up at home? His wife, his children. Can you imagine the celebration? That's why when we have someone come forward and accept Jesus Christ as Lord, what a celebration. Amen? Amen. Because he was lifted up by Christ. Christ himself says, Arise! Apparently he was on his knees. He's sent by Christ. Christ says, Go! And he says the same thing to us today. Arise! You have been healed. And go share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because he had the faith to believe that Jesus Christ could heal him. If you've never asked Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life, I want you to know, Christ is the answer. Christ can heal you. I end today's message as I began. 
May the grace of God the Father and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, be multiplied in your life. As our praise team comes, you may be wondering, pastor, preacher, for those of you that are watching and listening on the internet, you may be wondering, what is this gospel I hear about? Well, just write this in your margin if you're sitting here in the sanctuary. Write this uh, on a piece of paper if you're watching from the internet. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Read those first eight verses, but it essentially says this. It says that we are sinners, and as sinners we are separated from our Heavenly Father. But God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, in human form to earth to live the pure, sinless life, to die on the cross for our sins. He was, in, he was dead, and He was buried in the ground for three days. But on the third day, He rose again to the glory of God the Father. And if you will believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. Do you know that the scripture never says to receive Christ as Savior? It never says that anywhere in the Bible. It says, receive Him as Lord. He is to be the Lord of your life. And all you have to do is receive Him. Every head bowed and every eye closed. All over the sanctuary. You've been so very patient today. I thank you for that. Thank you for joining us today. For more information, visit our website at www.lhcfl.com. Visit us on Facebook or get the Church Link app from the App Store. Again, thank you and we hope to see you in service soon.